Hello, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Progress Report, a weekly program about economic development and local government in and around Green Bay and Brown County. I'm your host, Bill Mindel. A big thank you to Political Radar for creating, sponsoring, and producing this show. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot, a lot going on in the Green Bay area in economic development in the city, around Green Bay, downtown, you name it. And that includes government activity. Brown County, for one, has just launched a big six-year, $225 million capital projects plan. At $225 million, that puts the plan on a scale equal to developments of late at Lambeau Field, in the Titletown District, in Ashwaubenon, and in downtown Green Bay. It's a big deal. The county's capital projects plan would be funded through a combination of a temporary six-year, half-cent county sales tax, plus room taxes at local hotels. But there's a catch. Last month, the Brown County Taxpayers Association filed a lawsuit against the county to block the sales tax, calling it illegal. Here to talk about the capital projects plan, the sales tax, and all things Brown County is Brown County Executive Troy Struckenbach. Welcome, Troy, to the Progress Report. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate the opportunity to come uh, speak to your uh, viewers. And, uh, and have this discussion about what's really important to the Brown County taxpayers and businesses uh, of our community to make sure that Northeast Wisconsin and Brown County are positioned well for um, the future. Uh, we are celebrating our 200th anniversary, uh, so we have the 200 years of, of our past, and obviously the infrastructure debt, redu debt reduction tax relief plan is really about our future and making that a critical investment um, the, the position Brown County uh, in a way that allows us to be competitive in the future. And we're doing that, um, as you saw, as this played out um, last year, we are doing something that uh, not many governments can say. We're reducing the, the debt levy by, or the debt, the overall debt by $70 million. It's cutting our debt in half. It's the largest debt reduction um, in the history of Brown County's government. We're doing that at the same time of reducing our overall debt levy by $5 million. And we're making the critical investments in our infrastructure, such as about $60 million in our roads, our bridges, something that's vitally important for the overall success of our community for economic development, something that businesses and residents rely on, and that's safe, uh, the ability to travel uh, safely and commute. And, you know, the days that we've watched the federal government and the state government uh, constantly challenged in terms of how they're going to fix our roads, um, they continue to kick the can down the road. And, you know, essentially the Brown County Board, who voted 23 to 3, along with myself and the community and all those organizations that came out in support of it, realized that this is a good conservative, uh, fiscal conservative plan that ultimately addresses the important aspects of uh, our community. And again, I can't stress the fact that we're reducing our debt by $70 million. We're fixing our infrastructure. Things are important for our ability to develop in the future. And to me, this is the, the right policy. And, and unfortunately, the Brown County Taxpayers Association, um, I think they're on the wrong side of this, this policy discussion. They essentially would prefer to see the county um, you know, do the traditional form, and that is to uh, ring up the credit card, pass that cost on to future generations. Uh, it's estimated roughly about $40 million in interest that we would have to pay. Uh, it would increase our property taxes roughly by $24 million over the period. And, uh, and they, they would prefer us to follow that same course. And unfortunately, uh, we think that's the, the, wor the wrong policy. Uh, the plan that we have approved and gone forward with is actually the fiscal conservative way for us to address the needs of this community and that's why you saw it supported by such a uh, wide variety of the community. So from your view it's infrastructure, it's debt reduction, and it's fiscal responsibility. 100 percent. It is. And, and, and essentially that's been the question about how do you bring forth a project that has such an, a large investment to it that is not uh, one continued uh, going into the black hole of government. Uh, our plan essentially is capital related. It is 72 months, it sunsets, it ends. Um, the way that the Brown County Taxpayers Association has been talking about it, they would prefer us just to put this on the levy. Once you raise that levy, it's hard to go away. Let's talk about the capital projects plan. 
Um, I believe the county has contractually committed spending $20 million on the capital plan, plus the county has sent out RFPs for other components and is preparing for a number of sales tax funded highway projects this year. Is that, is that true? Well, we are, we are definitely, and we're going to be in April beginning the process of construction of roughly 12, $10 million just in, in infrastructure roads. Uh, we do have the RFPs out for the project managers for both the medical examiner's office along with the uh, new jail. So that's roughly about $20 million in, in total when the, the total package is completed. And that will obviously be in 2018, 2019 uh, year periods. But yeah, we're in that process. Those things are happening right now. The capital projects plan is underway. It is. This might be a better question for the county attorney, but the Taxpayers Association says the sales tax is illegal because it doesn't directly reduce the property tax levy. So, you know, there's a number of different angles on this uh, discussion, but one, Bill, we feel very comfortable and confident that the way we applied the sales tax is in the spirit of the statutes and the intent that lawmakers uh, drafted it. And so when we essentially are providing for that $70 million debt reduction, we essentially have stopped uh, taking out any new new debt. We essentially have taken out, stopped a moratorium on any new debt. When that new debt has been um, basically stopped for those 72 months, the same time right now we're paying roughly 14 million in uh, new debt or in debt payments that over time will drop by roughly five million. Right there is the tax relief that's taking place. So essentially we meet it in that intent. The second thing is that um, what the 1998 Attorney's General's opinion basically said that if you're gonna have future debt such as fixing our roads, so again, are we gonna stop fixing our roads or are we gonna continue to pay for them either through a sales tax or through the uh, previous way we've done it and that's through bonding. Well when you bond for these things you have to pay for that bonding one way or the other and by paying for the bonding you increase the debt levy to pay for that. Um, the state statutes essentially states that that is exempt from the levy limit um, uh, calculations and so had we gone the normal course we would still be in, in the appropriate way for us to manage this. Is it part of the sales tax deal, is it written into it, that the county will, will not bound, bond for six years while so, the sales tax is in effect? Is so the county board wanted to make sure, and, and myself included, the way we draw, drafted this was that in order for us to be able to meet that $70 million debt reduction and to have that property tax relief built in, uh, we had to have a moratorium on any new debt going so forward. So that moratorium is in there? That moratorium is part of it. It's uh, part of the 72 month uh, sunset clause. And if we take out any new debt, the sales tax actually ends. So if you were to bond, the sales tax is over. It, it would, by the way, the ordinance is drafted and, and has been improved, it would be. What about cutting $147 million elsewhere in the county budget? That's the amount of money to be raised by the sales tax over six years to pay for the capital projects. What about just cutting that amount of money from the from the budget to balance spending for infrastructure? Well, well, I mean, our, the amount of money that we levy current property taxpayers is roughly 90 million, and to do something like that, you're essentially shutting down the sheriff's department. Um, it's unreasonable and it's, it's not applicable. Again, kicking that can down the road as we have done in the past, or doing something that would allow for our, the, the levy to grow, um, it just doesn't make any sense, and quite frankly, We've kicked the can down the road long enough, and it's time for us to address these issues. It leads to my next question. What about just not spending money for these infrastructure projects? Because the Taxpayers Association has suggested that. Just don't spend the money. I, you know, I noticed the word uh, uh, being used as luxuries. I, I would say to uh, anyone in the, in the community, do they feel that fixing their roads is a, uh, a luxury or a necessity? I would argue that that's a very popular uh, you know, respect from what government provides. It's a responsibility that we've been doing. The way we've been doing it, Bill, for the last, I, well, as long as I've been here, we've been bonding. And we've been increasing the overall cost associated with that bonding. Now, since I've been in office, we've been working on uh, knocking down the overall debt of the county. 
Uh, but if you're going to make an investment in your community, one way or the other, we have to pay for it. It doesn't show up magically. And so for us to kick that can down the road or not to take on these projects, we're only impacting the ability for our community to be successful. Businesses absolutely need our infrastructure uh, in order for them, for them to move product in and out of our market. And so the fact that we would stop fixing our roads, um, to me that's just not an appropriate way for us to manage our, our government. And quite frankly, we would never support that. What we suggest is that the way we do it, the way we're paying for it, is instead of us putting on the credit card and passing this on to future generations, for a period of time of 72 months, let's allow the visitors who come to our community, let's allow the sales tax, which everybody participates, not just property taxpayers, everybody can participate in this, can help us fix our roads and in the necessities of, uh, of running government. The association also says the county should have held an advisory referendum first before deciding on whether to enact a sales tax. Your view on a referendum? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I think uh, Brown County is responsible for uh, overseeing a budget of roughly $250 million. Each year we vote on that. Um, we feel comfortable that in terms of looking at the overall package and what this ultimately does to the property taxpayers of Brown County, uh, this is the fiscal conservative plan that essentially uh, allows for us to make the improvements into our community. It allows for us to invest in our infrastructure. Uh, and essentially from that standpoint, we felt that uh, in order for us to get this done, uh, this was the, the right business decision in terms of how to address these issues that essentially continues to get the can kicked down the road. And in the end, when I you know, presented this through the 11, 11 listening sessions that I had, I essentially went to the public and said, we are about to reduce our debt by $70, billion, or $70 million. We're cutting it in half. Where is the federal government on that? How is our state handling that? Uh, we're going to provide for property tax relief through the natural moratorium on all new debt going forward for the 72 months, so we'll see property tax rate reduction. And we're gonna invest in our roads. We're gonna invest in things that are operationally costing us more money, such as the jail expansion. Uh, if we don't address that issue, the cost for us to outsource uh, inmates to other county is going to surpass a million dollars and that's local property tax dollars that could potentially be in use for other things tax relief or programs and services that are critical for our own people so from that standpoint when we brought this forward it just made sense uh, in terms of how it did it it uh, essentially provided for the things that were appropriate and the things that essentially have been debated now Bill I know you come to a number of our meetings and you've watched these debate uh, these debates about how to address the jail, how to address the medical examiner's office, the fact that we're going to increase the amount of money that we're to fix our roads from an average of $6 million all the way up to 10, so we're going to spend an additional $4 million to fix our roads. Not a lot of people, when that came forward, people got it. People understood and they felt like we were managing the county's uh, fiscal manners in the appropriate way and we had the sunset part of it and it you know, so essentially that's why we move forward. This also funds the STEM Center, library upgrades, museum upgrades? So there's a lot of things within this, uh, through this plan. Um, obviously the county board prior to this, the sales tax coming forward agreed that they were going to fund the STEM Innovation Center through n traditional um, um, means of uh, bonding. Uh, so that was part of it, of course, and that's obviously been leveraged. You saw Representative Nigren and Representative Mako be strongly supportive of this for University, University of Green Bay's uh, uh, quest to bring an engineering school uh, to Northeast Wisconsin. And, and essentially the STEM Innovation Center is the catalyst for that engineering school. It will be housed there. And this is absolutely necessary for our manufacturing base to have the workforce pipeline uh, for the future uh, business needs in this community. So again, those are all very important aspects to the success of this community. It shows collaboration. It shows where the communities come together. And again, that's why you saw that it wasn't just Brown County Board and Brown County Executive standing there by themselves with this plan. As you saw, there was a wider range of individuals and chambers and trade unions just you name it, they were, they were out there supporting this and it's unfortunate that 
just a very few people from the Brown County Taxpayers Association, um, you know, are, are, are asking for there to be an injunction. Where is the county board on this issue today? Supervisors, as you mentioned, voted 23 to 3 last May to, to approve the sales tax. They're still with you? and. I think they're with us. They're with us stronger than, than what they were before. I think they're a little uh, um, upset that the Taxpayers Association decided to bring forth the suit, especially after it went into effect. It would have been one thing if they would have brought it forward in the beginning, right after it passed back in May. Um, to wait till after it went into effect just it just seems it, uh, we don't understand why. What's your view today, Troy, of the Taxpayers Association? I believe you've spoken to the group in the past. Um, are you frustrated? Are you surprised? Are you angry? Well, they're no different than any other group in our community, whether I'm going to meet with, uh, you know, I think I have a meeting coming up with the Patriot Group. I've met with Joshua Groups. I've met with anybody who's willing uh, to have me come and speak to them to try to give them a, a better understanding of what Brown County is doing. I have met with the Taxpayers Association for many years. Uh, matter of fact, I would argue that they've generally have supported and endorsed uh, the, uh, the budgets that I've come forward with. Uh, they generally have always endorsed uh, and approved the way I've conducted the county's business. Um, and so I was a little bit surprised. Matter of fact, right after the sales tax passed, I went and spoke to their membership. Um, and had a few, you know, there were a couple people in there who weren't necessarily pleased, but I had a number of their members come up and say this is the right approach and this is a fiscal conservative way of addressing uh, the community's needs. And, you know, so yeah, I'm a little, a little surprised um, and a little bit frustrated, but understand that, um, you know, that's, that's part of being a part of a democracy. It's, uh, it's, it's just part of being an elected official as well. Is the association what you might call a beacon for fiscal responsibility, or with this lawsuit, has it marginalized itself as an extremist group? <laughs> well, I, I would just say that what they're proposing and uh, and uh, and as to how to handle the community's needs, um, you know, they're they're essentially su suggesting that we continue to follow the same course of of uh, action, and, and that to me is not the fiscal conservative way of addressing the needs of this community. They would rather see the property taxpayers of Brown County uh, fund uh, these these uh, aspects of infrastructure and such. So I, I I question their policy on that in terms of being a the conservative group. Um, so from our perspective, again, we're looking at the things that we're doing. We're reducing the debt by seventy million dollars, cutting it in half. We're cutting the credit card up. We're not passing those costs on to the future generations. We're reducing the overall debt levy uh, roughly by $5 million over the course of those 72 uh, months. And we're asking everyone to share in the expense, even those who come to visit us for Packer games, um, uh, to share in the expense of paying for the $60 million of road improvements, helping us pay for that jail, helping us pay for the improvements to our libraries, of which, quite frankly, that can has been kicked down the road. I mean, you've seen and listened to the debates uh, you and I have had personal one-on-ones about, you know, your, you know, questioning about the decisions that we are making from our office. Um, in the end, I recognize that that can has been kicked down the road, and it's time for us to address some of these capital needs of the of the county. The purpose behind a lot of these decisions, Bill, is to actually help us in the operational side. The things that would cost us more money, whether it's reducing our footprint or creating efficiencies. The, the, the capital investments are ultimately de driving at creating efficiencies and helping the county operate more effectively. And as you mentioned, Troy, the taxpayers group is asking for first a temporary injunction against the sales tax and then a permanent injunction just to kill it off permanently. Sure. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll learn here on February 20th uh, as to the decision by Judge Atkinson whether or not there will be an injunction. Uh, in a temporary uh, halt. I can say that right now, if that was to take place, um, that would put a lot of things into a, a major tailspin. Uh, we have literally $10 million worth of road products that will be halt, uh, halted. And uh, in our budget, we don't have that. Um, and so uh, infrastructure is gonna be uh, badly in, impacted by this. Uh, roads that need to be fixed or improved are not going to get completed. And 
Um, so that's, that would be an unfortunate aspect. The other unfortunate aspect is that uh, depending on whatever ends up happening, we're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of attorney fees to address this issue uh, because we are confident that the Taxpayers Association along with Will uh, intend on bringing this all the way to the Supreme Court. And so mo local taxpayers' dollars are going to be uh, used to fight this uh, lawsuit that ultimately Brown County and um, uh, the Brown County Board of Supervisors all believe that the way we Im implemented this is 100% within the spirit of the statute that was created and we believe that this is the more, uh, best fiscal conservative approach for us to address the needs of this community. So everybody's going to be looking to that February 20th court hearing with great anticipation. Well, it certainly will be uh, something that we'll be watching for. <laughs> I focused on the capital projects plan, the sales tax, and the lawsuit, Troy. Is there anything else about Brown, about Brown County that you care to, to mention, talk about? Well, you know, I, oftentimes people don't understand exactly what Brown County represents. Um, we have 30 different departments. We do everything from, you know, public health to the airport, the zoo, museums, libraries, sheriff's office, the court system, human services. Uh, we're a very broad, uh, diverse organization. We have over 1,800 employees. Uh, we have roughly a budget that um, is anywhere between uh, 260 to 300 million, depending on what's happening that year. And, um, you know, we're celebrating our 200th, 200th anniversary or 200th birthday on October 26, uh, 2018. So Brown County was one of two counties that uh, originally formed back in 1818. Crawford being the other? Crawford being the other. Uh, we are named after General Jacob Brown, uh, who was a war hero of 1812. Um, and in the spirit of the naming of our county and uh, some of the main events that we'll have, uh, May 29th will be our Brown County exhibit at Neville Museum. Uh, and then we'll have the official birthday party at the Neville Museum, which will be October 26th. And then we'll cap the celebration with uh, an honor flight, the Flight of Champions out of uh, Austin Straubel International. And that's really to signify the uh, Austin Straubel, who was a local hero uh, and who is named, our, our airport is named after. It'll be celebrating the veterans who made this country, um, you know, the ability for us to live in the greatest country in the world, uh, protecting those freedoms. And at the same time, we'll be um, celebrating the fact that uh, our airport is in our veterans. So it's, it's a good way for us to end cap the celebration. It's a year long. We'll be in a number of different events, whether it's the farmer's market out by Pulaski for the Polko Days. We'll be down in Denmark. We'll be throughout the community in different capacities to kind of represent uh, that Brown County is made up of 22 different municipalities, and all of them have different aspects to the, the greater uh, good of this community. That's terrific. Happy birthday. Hey, thanks. And that's it for episode number one of the Progress Report. Thank you, Troy, for being the first guest. Yep. And thanks to executive producer Dan Jones, producer Jacob Jones, producer Darian Goheen, editor Christian Rivera, and technician Serena Warriak. Thanks for watching this episode. Make sure to subscribe to Political Radar on YouTube. Join the Political Radar Community Group on Facebook, and you can support this show financially by purchasing Political Radar merchandise from our shop. For more political discussions, check out Line Partisan. See you next week.